Now to the issue of excessive litigation as elections approach, something that makes the election process bumpy and challenging for the political parties and the election commission. INEC and rather confusing for the public. But one election-related lawsuit seemed to have been painstakingly attentive in its detail. At least that's what the experts told us. It's a case filed against the ruling APC party by one of its former presidential aspirants, Emeka Wajuba, who until recently was the Minister of State for Education. He was seeking to disqualify the APC's presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, over vote buying, but the case has been dismissed by the courts. So what was the court's reasoning and where did the plaintiffs get it wrong? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the lawyer, Arise Judiciary Editor and Deputy Director of News, Toby Shoni. Thank you very much indeed, Toby. Yeah, thank you. So, one less case in the legal season in proximity to the 2023 ballot. Remind us of the bare bones of this case, which had to do with compliance, I think, with Section 90, subsection 3 of the Electoral Act. Yeah. Well, you say one, one case down? There are many cases down, anyway. Mm. Only that this is one of the sensational cases. Well, with, uh, let's pay due diligence to the fact that I have not read the judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, uh, my comment will be based on uh, what had been reported. But so far, so good. I think, uh, if you remember the last time I was here, I kind of uh, alluded to the view that that case may not go anywhere. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, but <coughs> I, I, I said that the judge, in my own view, went too far by claiming that, uh, assuming the NGO does not have a uh, the legal capacity to sue, what we call a local standard. Mm. I believe that American Wajuba should have local standards. Yeah, and let's just explain that briefly. The, the, the case was brought by an NGO and the second plaintiff was Emeka Wajuba. Absolutely. Right. And, and what was, I mean, what, what, what has the court decided? What was the substance of its ruling? The, the substance is that the court said it does not have jurisdiction mm -hmm. to entertain the case because the plaintiff do not have the locus, the capacity, right. the legal right to file the action. Right. And that was based on what was the argument? Yeah, the, obviously, it's, it's one of the arguments that is, uh, is very common in Nigeria. You know, I mean, it's the, I think the idea is to make sure that not every case makes it to court. Mm. You know, it's to still allude to what the CGN, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, was saying that uh, we are too litigious. Mm. So somehow so they too defies means to stop some of these cases that if you don't have an interest in the case. For instance, if two tenants are fighting and you that just a passerby say you want to sue on that case, you have no interest. Right. Though you cannot give that if there is peace there, there will probably be peace at your hand. Mm. But you have to have some kind of direct Yeah, I see uh, what you mean. Yeah. So so, so the court is essentially arguing that the NGO does not have the capacity the, the, the right yeah. motive or, or yeah, does it, not it, involvement in the case it does not you see what I mean? that, that it's not actually it doesn't have the the the, the capacity if you like yeah. to bring the, the a case like that absolutely but uh, I because it's an NGO, and yeah, in when, other when words, that it's a charity. Yeah. When and what's it doing, bringing a case with to do with politics? When uh, a non-governmental organization is registered with mm. Corporate Affairs Commission, there will be objective. What you want to do? Mm. Uh, apparently, they just took the view that meddling in political affairs is not one of the objects of that uh, objective for which the. And this NGO and you was set up. Yeah. Right. I haven't seen the objective anyway. Right. But we'll rely on the court's uh, reasoning. And the, the judge went as far as saying that the Corporate Affairs Commission should 
I mean, uh, wind up the... Yes, yes, I, I, I saw mean, that. And I think, uh, I don't know whether he gave the plaintiff the opportunity to address the court on that issue. Because right. the court, if, uh, uh, what we call so motto, if a court or a judge raises an issue on his, on his own, he needs to give the parties opportunity right. to address the court on the issue. So I wouldn't know whether the they they got the chance to they do got that. The chance. Right. If they did not, then that is agreeable. The is, yes, it's a recognized point of appeal. That I'm sure if they if they appeal, hmm. they might succeed on that. Well, I, I want to ask you in a minute what grounds they can appeal on. But I mean, I'm, I'm wondering whether or not the fact that he essentially disqualified the the first plaintiff. Yeah. who is the NGO, does that automatically then eliminate the second plaintiff who is Emeka Wajuba? Because if, if the first plaintiff doesn't have a case and, and you are kind of bringing a case with that first plaintiff, does that automatically get you off the case? No, the answer should be no. Right. Yeah, because like I said earlier, Emeka Wajuba should ordinarily have the capacity to sue. Right. Even if the NGO does not. So it will be interesting to get a copy of the judgment mm. and see what the judge says about uh, Wajuba. But y y we're talking about grounds for appeal. Yeah. Um, is it likely that the plaintiffs will take things to a higher court or is this judgment something of a body blow that might be difficult, if not impossible, to recover from, and I know you said you haven't read, uh, you know, the, the entire judgment. Yeah. But from from your experience of these matters, I is it likely to be taken further? Absolutely, I believe that it will be taken further. One, mm. because even the life of the NGO now is at stake. The <laughs> the judge has literally decreed the the NGO out of existence, and NGO, the NGO has to struggle back to regain his own life. Mm. So even if it will not succeed on a, a case against the Numbu, the, maybe the NGO may succeed in, uh, I mean... Uh, in staying alive, ab basically. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. That, that's a good point. But just so that we, we're clear, for people who po possibly didn't follow this case um, th all through and, you know, to understand what was actually... Um, why they went to court in the first place. I mean, they, they were um, talking about compliance with Section 90, subsection 3 of the Electoral Act, which states that any contribution to a political party beyond 50 million naira must be verified. And the candidates who purchase nomination forms, the APC candidates, yeah. at a cost of 100 million naira, um, their argument, these plaintiffs, was that the source of that money was not verified. And it seemed for a moment there as if they had a credible case, didn't they? Yeah, but the problem is, once the court holds that you don't have the legal capacity to sue, it will not even go into the substantive issues. Yeah. Whether rightly or wrongly, Tinubu contributed 100 million and the source of his income was not verified or mm. not, the judge won't go there. But I didn't mean that the NGO has the capacity to sue, then it will not proceed then. Yes, so, I see what you mean. Yeah, and, uh, it's unfortunate. So that issue remains untested. Mm. Maybe somebody that has the capacity to sue can still take that up and challenge it and see. We, we, all, we need to know. Like I raised the issue earlier, whether the money you use to buy from is a contribution to political party. Yes. That question needs to be resolved. To be determined. Because yeah. if it is determined, then yeah. maybe political party will learn to charge lesser fees mm. and allow more people to participate in the, the democratic process. Absolutely. Because without some million, they literally short out a lot of people who might want to aspire to be president on their platform. That's a good point. Yeah. But I understand that there are a number of other cases that are still pending against Bola Ahmed Tinubu, where they're trying to get him disqualified. So he's not entirely out of the woods yet, is he? Sure. Even if he wins, the opposition will still raise the same issue. Hmm. So the case, the, I mean, the issue remains a live issue. He's not out of the woods. Hmm. Yeah. Whatever happens, other cases will continue.
But you, you talked about, when we started this uh, discussion, about the issue of excessive litigation yeah. um, as elections approach. I mean, you give us a sense of what the climate is like in that regard. Well, to begin with, because the political parties never do things rightly, mm. they outsource their problem to the court. And basically, if, for instance, four of us contest for a post, one win, mm. and it's very transparent, there is likelihood that nobody will go to court to challenge it. But because the politicians are not able to abide by their own rules, abide by their own constitution, then the electoral act and the constitution of Nigeria, they keep on bombarding with I mean, the court. And therefore, the, basically, in all the 35 states, I'm not sure there is a state where there are no cases. Mm. Is that bad? And on different levels. Yeah, if it's not in PDP, it could be APC, it mm. could be APCA, it could be Labour. Somebody somewhere is in court for one issue, mm. and then uh, you will probably you need to sympathize with the judges. They, yeah, they have their hands full. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. But I mean, do, do, I suppose it's it's an unfair question to ask you if you see merit in this because there's so many of them. But but people just go to court in in oftentimes in the vain mm. hope that you know there'd be some kind of divine intervention and suddenly even if there is no substance to their argument well uh, to be fair to them some mm. of them have succeeded right some primaries have been nullified another primary had been ordered some have been upheld so some it's not uh, it's not a blanket thing it's not yeah some people were lucky they have very good case and i mm. mean cases and i mean judgment were delivered in their favor but majorly, majority of the cases may end up being frivolous. Mm. But do, do you think that that frivolity comes from just the ambition of, of the politicians or, or the fact that the lawyers are prepared to kind of go along with it? Because you would think that your, your lawyer would advise you and say, well, you're not likely to win basically in this case, but if you want to proceed, these are the best terms on which to, to proceed. Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct. I only need to add the third factor mm. that even judges too are not predictable. Some people believe that they can buy their way through the court, mm. and that's probably another encouragement. You know, once they know this thing is not going to work, nobody is going to. Because in, in the past, you see politicians just waiting. They will not campaign. They will not do anything, mm. and they will just go to court. And from nowhere, you get a judgment. So. And uh, unfortunately, that serves as an incentive for many of them to, to keep, keep on believing back. that they can buy their way through the court. So that is the third factor, apart from the inordinate ambition of the politicians, the legal advisor, lawyer too, must have briefs and they need to, I mean, this is their season, they need to smile to their bank. But they also find that judges too could play ball in some cases. and. That is well, it's like a combination of uh, the three factors. But it's a terrible indictment on the judicial system of this country, isn't it? Yeah, sure. There, there was a report a couple of years ago by United Nations uh, uh, Office on Crimes and uh, whatever, UNODC, that the, bulk, the highest uh, uh, volumes of money exchange hand in the in the judiciary, where the police has the frequency, you know, the likely, I mean, there are likely to be more briberies in the police, but the volumes of uh, money that exchange hand is highest in the judiciary, and, and nobody has been able to debunk that, uh, I mean, to deny that claim. So, obviously, things happen. So, we need to find a way to sanitize the judicial process. Too. Wise words indeed. Uh, Toby, thank you very much indeed. Toby Shoni is a lawyer, a rise judiciary editor and deputy director of news. Thank you ever so much.